Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. As the world fights a number of challenges on multiple fronts, including rising international tensions, a looming recession and climate change, all eyes will be on India as it assumes the G20 presidency on December 1. A burgeoning economic powerhouse and a major diplomatic force, can India, the country increasingly dubbed as a ray of hope in these troubling times, steer the world out of a multifold crisis? Join us as we explore further. Within days of reports that the Russia-Ukraine conflict was heading for a temporary ceasefire, Moscow bombarded Ukraine with dozens of missiles, putting an end to all speculations of potential peace. The latest incident was a major shock to all those who hoped that the protracted Russia-Ukraine war was reaching its end. Meanwhile, world leaders converged in Indonesia on November 15th and 16th for the G20 summit. India will assume the presidency of the Group of 20, the alliance of 19 major economies and the European Union on December 1st of this year. Many are hopeful that India can make meaningful contributions to the global economy and can help improve the current unstable geopolitical state of affairs during her reign as president. India, despite mounting global pressure, has been able to maintain positive diplomatic ties with both sides of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. India is also one of the few countries that both sides listen to when matters reach a breaking point. When I was uh, in the United Nations uh, um, a few, few days ago, uh, uh, the, the big concern at that time was the uh, safety of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant there, uh, because there was uh, there was some uh, fighting going on uh, very proximate to it. Uh, and again, uh, there was a request to us to uh, to to press the Russians on that issue, uh, which which we did. India will also face challenges on the economic front during its presidency. The world is staring at a recession following the COVID-induced economic downturn and supply chain issues further exacerbated by the Russia-Ukraine conflict, which has resulted in runaway inflation. Global growth has hit a major roadblock. While the world grew at 6% in 2021, the growth rate is projected to drop to 3.2% in 2022 and will further slip to 2.7% in 2023. The global inflation rate, which stood at 4.7% in 2021, is expected to rise to 8.8% by the end of 2022. India, however, is expected to grow by 6.8% in the current fiscal year. India is a model for others in achieving similar economic growth and stability. The G20 declaration, which predominantly echoed Indian ideas, vowed to push for global macroeconomic stability by giving nations, particularly disadvantaged ones, a platform to improve their financial resilience. According to economic experts, India, an emerging economy, has a deep economic understanding of middle-income and low-income countries. India, with its unique perspective, can help the G20 achieve its goal of enhancing the financial resilience of these nations. India's economic model, which has advocated for open, liberal markets that provide opportunities to even the most vulnerable, has garnered praise from countries and organizations throughout the world. We have a path forward to addressing current food and energy security challenges while continuing <coughs> our efforts to build a resilient global uh, economy. Prime Minister Modi's relationship was critical uh, to this outcome, and we look forward to, uh, to supporting India's G20, president, uh, G G20 presidency uh, next year. India's economy was able to quickly recover from the COVID pandemic thanks to the government's prudent fiscal policies. 
And today, India finds itself in a very unique position where she may serve as a spokesperson for a significant portion of the global population that has up until now either been neglected or ignored. So far, the agenda for the world was set by developed world. We were just responding to them. This is for the first time that the agenda has been set by uh, developing markets and we are getting other worlds to cooperate and bring in consensus to drive the world. This is also a historic time for the G20, which will now be led by a nation that has always placed dialogue and diplomacy at the center of its approach to international relations. India's diplomatic and economic policies have helped the country achieve significant growth at a time when other economies have failed or are struggling. Many predict that as India brings its tried and tested policies to the G20 presidency, the world will greatly benefit under the Brand India approach. Moving on. Like other parts of the world, Bangladesh too has been gripped by the football fever since it was kicked off a few days ago. From urban centers to villages, the country is soaked in football fervor. Meanwhile, the Bangladeshi workers who were key to the workforce that built the FIFA World Cup stadiums in Qatar said they were delighted and proud with the success of the World Cup so far and hoped everything went smoothly as the tournament progressed. Bangladesh might not be one of those countries where soccer takes a dominant spot on the sports framework but it certainly has thousands of ardent football fans. Like in other parts of the world, people here too were eagerly awaiting the start of the World Cup and now they all can be seen glued to screens. People in Madukhali village located to the west of capital Dhaka say they are particularly interested in this year's edition for they have a special connection with the World Cup. Such is the sports fervor in the village that FIFA World Cup billboards have lined the streets. For many of them who had worked as migrant workers in the host country Qatar, this is a World Cup fever like no other. As part of the construction crew who built the stadiums in the Middle Eastern nation, they are overwhelmed with pride and happiness. <laughs> football world cup khela hoybo to bhal lagto ar ki kas korar shomoy je ekhon okhane khela cholbe ekhane amra bangladesh achi bhai brother mille shobai mille dekhum tokhon bolum je ei fifa ei stadium amra kas korchi ar ki the 2022 world cup has been dogged by controversy since qatar was announced as the first middle eastern nation and gulf absolute monarchy to host it the wealthy gas producing country is home to 2.9 million people, the vast majority of whom are foreign workers ranging from low income construction workers to high powered executives. Rights groups have accused authorities of failing to protect lower income workers, including those who built the stadiums and hotels to host World Cup fans from overwork, unpaid wages and poor living conditions. The Qatari government says it has enacted labor reforms including a minimum monthly wage of 1000 Qatari riyals or about 275 US dollars more than many can earn back home. Ami Qatar e 4 bochor chilam ekhon chhurite aschi 4 bochor jonno oi khane she stadium e ekhon FIFA World Cup khela hocche ekhon anondo lagtase ekhan theke dekhte partasi oi khan thakle hoyto ba aro bhalo lagto World Cup fever has gripped Bangladesh with locals hitting the streets of Dhaka to stock up on supporters' merchandise for the global soccer tournament. Argentina and Brazil appear to be the most popular teams with plenty of shirts on sale from vendors and big flags proudly flying on rooftops over the city. People could be seen buying shirts for themselves and their kids. All hoped that their favorite teams could win. Artists have painted murals around the city with Messi, Brazilian forward Neymar and Croatian captain Luka Modric dominating the city walls. Moving on. 
When the world is grappling with runaway inflation, India is one of the few countries that have shown unusual progressive signs. It has not just performed remarkably well at the economic front, but has successfully contained the rate at which inflation has hit. Numbers suggest that India has not just outperformed the emerging economies, but the developed ones too. Let's dive a little deeper into the issue and understand how Indian economic strategy has played out well to check inflation. India has absorbed COVID-induced shocks far better than most other countries, be it fiscal policy, monetary policy, macroeconomic outlook, or by keeping a constant check on retail and wholesale pricing. India's economic growth has been particularly impressive in comparison to many developed economies who have yet to bounce back from the pandemic and its after effects. Global economic growth is expected to fall drastically over the next two years. However, India appears to be bucking the trend, with major international financial agencies, like Morgan Stanley, praising India's economic acceleration. India's retail inflation eased to 6.77% in October, from 7.41% the previous month. Food inflation also decreased by over 1.5 percentage points to 7.01% from 8.6% a month before. Fuel inflation also experienced a dip, falling to 9.93% from the 10.39% in September. India's strong economic foundation and recent prudent financial decisions have been seen by many as the reason the Indian economy continues to flourish. It's very unusual to see for almost a year that Indian inflation numbers are lower than developed economy numbers, for example, the US, UK, uh, but that has been the case. One of the major reasons was when the pandemic happened, we did not go overboard on the fiscal stimulus. It was very targeted stimulus to make sure that the poor and the vulnerable do not lose livelihood, they get food on time, etc. But it was not an open-ended um, X amount of money per month check for everybody. Shakti Kanta Das, the governor of India's central bank, the Reserve Bank of India, correctly predicted that adhering to the RBI's measures would help contain inflation below 7%. In fact, the Consumer Price Index inflation is predicted to drop to below 6% by the end of the fiscal year. It is such successful policies that have helped India become the world's fifth largest economy. The RBI has raised the repo rate, or the rate at which it loans to banks to control inflation. The most recent repo rate rise by the RBI was by 50 basis points. The Monetary Policy Committee of RBI has definitely been successful in taming the inflation by uh, changing monetary policy tools to control the money supply and thereby control the inflation. Mm -hmm. Global oil prices have also spiked, owing to an increase in geopolitical tensions due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The supply chain disruption that followed has only added to already mounting inflation throughout the world. Many predict that if global oil prices were to fall, the prices of other commodities would follow suit. However, given the unsuccessful attempt at a ceasefire between Russia and the Ukraine, oil prices will likely stay sky high for the foreseeable future. India, however, thanks to her diplomatic policies, has been able to put her citizens first and keep oil affordable. India was able to purchase a sizable portion of its oil imports at a lower cost, which also had a positive impact on the country's inflation rates. Although the inflation rates have remained above the RBI's tolerance band of 2 to 6 percent, they have stayed below 7 percent and have not so severely affected consumers, as is being experienced in many other parts of the world. The government has also attempted to contain inflation through different means. 
The government's national monetization pipeline has the potential to release over 73 billion USD by monetizing the assets of public sector units. The government has also made the best use of its foreign exchange reserves to lower inflation by intervening at crucial times to subsidize the price of essential commodities. India's economic plan has helped it recover from the pandemic and its after effects, and many are optimistic that this same foundation will help the country flourish even further. With thanks to its economic principles, policies and people, the Brand India approach will continue to keep inflation at bay and will continue to protect the needs and well-being of Indian citizens. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Beijing streets were nearly empty in the later half of the week as China reported another record high of daily COVID-19 infections and cities across the country enforced measures and curbs to control outbreaks. Excluding imported infections, China reported over 32,000 new local cases on Thursday alone, a daily record for the second consecutive day beating a figure set in mid-April when the commercial hub of Shanghai was crippled by a city-wide lockdown that lasted two months. Beijing's daily tally for Thursday was 424 symptomatic new local cases and 1,436 asymptomatic cases. Authorities in the Chinese capital have locked down neighborhoods and temporarily shut shops as well as businesses to lower the risk of infections. Singapore's countdown event Star Island has been cancelled due to COVID-19 but will be back in 2022 after a break caused by the pandemic. Japanese international brand JCB supports this event and global people are looking forward to the new year. We have two purposes uh, by holding this event. Uh, at first, uh, we aim to boost travel uh, recovery from foreign countries such as uh, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, and the Philippines, like ASEAN countries, and of course Japan as well. Uh, as you know, right, so due to the COVID-19 spread, uh, the number of customer, uh, number of tourists from foreign countries has been dropped. We can appeal with using this uh, event and promotion for our customer in these countries where JCB card issued. Uh, we can contribute inbound tourism in Singapore and one of important mission for the company who do the business in Singapore. And second thing is we would like to uh, enhance our presence in the market. Uh, of course, our mission is to prepare for uh, our customer to uh, be able to use JCB card whenever they want. Uh, it is uh, quite important for us to make our partnership and merchant to understand JCB and it's quite important for uh, making the environment close to our vision. Star Island event is produced by the entertainment company Avex Asia. JCB will contribute to the development of global tourism industry amid decline in inbound and outbound tourists around the world. Motorbike giant Yamaha Motor announced raising safety declaration. Yamaha's history began with the YA1 launched in 1955. In the design stage, it pursued safe running, turning and stopping using the latest technology. This spirit is handed at Yamaha Motors' development sites to this day. Aiming zero traffic accident of motorbike, Yamaha Motor continuously investigate technology support for safe riding. レーダー連携ユニファイドブレーキシステムは前方車両に接近しすぎた時にライダーによるブレーキ操作が不十分の場合ブレーキ力を追加するアシスト
connected car and communication system between motorbike and other cars and motorbikes using radio wave is progressive technology. Running cars and motorbikes communicate each other to notify dangerous situation to close hidden cars access. Safe and comfortable driving with zero accident is the most important theme for Yamaha Motor. Involving DX technology, smartphone and metaverse, safety education is planned. Motorbike giant is growing to safety giant. Moving on. Ancestors are revered in Hinduism. It is believed that they become one among the deities after their lives on earth. A number of devotees recently gathered in Himalayan Nepal to mark Bala Chaturdashi festival, an occasion to celebrate the legacy of their ancestors and perform religious activities which, as per the belief, provide light to the departed souls. Have a look. Hundreds of devotees gathered on the banks of river Bagmati in capital Kathmandu to celebrate one of the most auspicious Nepali festivals, Bala Chaturdashi. They made religious offerings to the river, which is considered a deity among the Hindu devotees. Bala Chaturdashi is marked to remember the departed family members. Devotees float oil lamps on the river, which is believed to lighten the world of departed souls. People remain awake through the night, camping on the edge of Bagmati River while facing the Pashupatinath temple. I have been here for three years. I have been here for three years. I I I रायु बत्ती के लिए फूल है रू तारीन सा यो तो ही फूल तारे आ बंजने लाय यो टांग ना को कारण सही ते ही पित्री हरू मोक्ष उन वारी वाटा पारी पुगन बन्ना का लागे फूल तारीन सा रिचुअल्स फॉर बाला चतुर्दशी फेस्टिवल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम मार्ग कृष्ण त्रयोदशी द थर्टीन्थ डे ऑफ द वेनिंग मून इन द मं People who observe this ritual keep a fast and eat only one meal in a day. They avoid eating garlic, onions, fish, eggs and other food items on that day. In the evening, people visit the Pashupatinath temple or shrines dedicated to Lord Shiva and chant hymns and prayers through the night. <laughs> हमरा दिन में तो पित्री अरुले पाऊन होन्छ मनेरा उन्हार के नाम में सारी इंचा रात वाली बत्ती वाली इंचा ये ऑयले यहाँ उन्हारे पाऊन होन्छ नर चौथा नाम पनी राहे माइले अली अली आई ना ये तारीम की विश्वास में अखंड ज्योति मीनिंग इटरनल फ्लेम इस लिट टू रिमेम्बर द डिपार्टेड फैमिली मेंबर्स the next day, they take a bath and begin their journey around the Pashupatinath temple premises and spread seven kinds of grains along the way. As per the belief, taking dip three times into Bagmati river is considered a path to purification. The grains include rice, barley, sesame, wheat, chickpeas, maize and foxtail millet. The people walk along Kailash, Suragat, Gauri Ghat, Aragat, Gohyeshwari, Mrigasthali, Bishwarup Kirteshwar, 108 Shivalinga. It is also one of the festivals that provide an opportunity for different sections of society to reunite and celebrate together. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.